So, August 14th, 1992, was one of the happiest days of my life. My only daughter was born, Chelsea Maria Lee. One of the worst days, the worst day of my life was when my daughter passed, August 18th, 2022. She was murdered by fentanyl. This is my baby. That's one of the pictures she uh, painted. I have them placed around the house in uh, remembrance of her, her talents, my love for her. And I'll be talking about the open borders and fentanyl in this country shortly. Uh, this fight will never end for me. I need to get her justice and every life that was lost in this country by the inaction of this administration. So I started working with fentanyl about uh, three or four years ago on a project with uh, a woman, Jill, and uh, a guy, John Raschuti, I've done uh, several shows with on the main line in uh, Philadelphia. And the show was uh, directly in, uh, involved with fentanyl in Kensington. Kensington is one of the biggest drug areas in the United States. And it's a drug-free zone where uh, you can shoot up there, you can uh, buy drugs there, and uh, to me, it's the most ridiculous thing this government has ever come up with. And we did a, a documentary on, uh, called The Kensington, and uh, it discusses fentanyl. Obviously, unbeknownst to myself, my daughter, uh, years later, will be, was killed by fentanyl. Took a pill, Percocet, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, the day after her 30th birthday, and lost her life. Uh, my grandson was with her in the bed. She took the pill to lay down, uh, never woke up. We had her on life support for four days. Uh, my best friend is a neurosurgeon. He does a lot of TV shows with me, uh, radio shows, a lot of interviews, and he discusses the uh, medical terminology and medical perspective of uh, fentanyl, its effects, opioids, and a drug addiction in this country. Um, I got deeply involved in it, obviously, because after my daughter and uh, uh, she lost her life, but I know she would want me to do this and save other kids' lives. She was uh, <laughs> uh, special, obviously, to me as my daughter, but she was always trying to help people and she loved animals and she was uh, involved in dog grooming, uh, a painter, she did a lot of paintings around my house, and I have her paintings around the, the pictures of her in remembrance of her. The problem we're running into now, as we're doing talks about fentanyl, it coincides with the immigration surge that this administration is allowing. You have two problems with immigration and drugs entering this country. The cartels are making billions off of bringing in illegal drugs into this country, and uh, mainly fentanyl now. Because of the profit margin of one kilo, you can make up to a million dollars. Because of such profit margin, if somebody asks for cocaine, they're filling them with uh, fentanyl, which obviously is 100 times stronger than heroin. There's a new fentanyl pill that just came out. They just uh, found it in Minnesota recently. It's a gray fentanyl pill. It's even stronger than the fentanyl I just discussed. The problem now is kids are dying 100,000 plus a year and growing in this country, and the administration is leaving this border open. Now, you can leave this border open and, and the idea of people that are pro-immigration, which I am, but in the right way. Everybody wants that American dream. And I've discussed this on several interviews. There is no American dream here for the immigrants, for this country, for the cost of this country, 
and for the crime, terrorism that's being led in this country, terrorists, and uh, unknown uh, getaways uh, through these borders. Now they're starting to come in through the Canadian border. I believe about 50,000 have come in through the north side. The southern border, we have millions that came in. The problem of this is they can't get work visas. They're moving them to the streets. They're defecating on the street. They're being murdered on the way over. They're being prostituted on the way over. Kids are being separated from their families. They're being uh, trafficking. Child trafficking is, is the numbers are exuberant now. Uh, they are being forced to bring over drugs. They're indebted to the cartel. Their families in their countries have to pay that debt. If they don't pay that debt, they're killing them. They're beating them. They're prostituting them. They're making them work for them, sell drugs, not just in this country, in those countries. And in this country, they can't get a work visa for four years or five years or maybe more than that. Nobody even knows at this point. So how do they take care of their family? How do they find their kids that got separated from them? And this is a question that this administration won't answer. But more importantly, they're bringing over and they're being forced to bring fentanyl in for these cartels. And we're losing kids day and night to a drug that is, is deadly. Why aren't we doing anything about it? Why are we not enforcing sanctions on Mexico, on their government, who the head of their FBI is on trial right now, that he was working with the cartels? So we're not stopping the open border policy, and we're allowing that door to be open like this. This is no American dream, not for the immigrants. It's, a, it's, it's an American nightmare. It's destroying our communities, and there's no end in sight. And yet, politically, they mention the word, but there's no real action from this administration. They keep lying to the kids. They keep lying to our families. They keep lying to the communities around uh, each state. And there's nothing being done about it as they're dying. One after another, every family you talk to, somebody in their family or friend has died from fentanyl overdoses, which is murder. It's not an overdose when they're putting drugs that they're not aware of in their pills. That's in diet pills, that's in opioids, that's in cocaine, that's in marijuana, without their knowledge. And two little grains of sand can kill someone. It's that powerful. Now they came out with the new gray fentanyl that just been discovered in Minnesota. And with the gray fentanyl, the uh, knock packs don't work. So even if they knock them and uh, they spray them, it's, it has no effect on them. Now, an overdose, for the people that don't understand what an overdose is when someone blows up their heart from mixing different types of drugs together, drinking, and, and it, they blow up their heart and they die. In their sleep sometimes, not in their sleep, heart attacks. But in these cases, one pill, a Percocet, at 9 o'clock in the morning that my daughter took, laid down with her, with her son, and never woke up. That's one pill. One pill that she thought was a Percocet. Right? How does this government explain this? How do they justify this? How do they justify the lives we're losing every day, day in and day out, and there's no real move to stop this? What's their objective? Why aren't they doing anything? Why are we sending tanks over to Ukraine Send 125 billion there, send billions to Jordan, to Iran, to different countries, and we will not spend money on our own borders, our own kids. And again, this isn't humanitarian towards those immigrants that are coming here. They're all here for a dream. Instead, they're losing family members, they're being abused, they're being used, they're being sold to trafficking, and they're in debt for being brought over here by the cartels. We need answers. We need solutions. We need justice for our families that are dying and losing their lives here every day. Please contact me. My website, johnelite.com. Help us fight against fentanyl. Help us fight for justice for all the families. Thank you, everybody.